Welcome back. In the last video, I showed you how to synchronize speech bubbles with the sound coming from the text-to-speech blocks, and we did that by putting in wait blocks in between each phrase. But in this video, I'm going to show you a different way to accomplish the same thing. Now keep in mind that there are multiple ways to do it even with this method, but I'm going to show you one way. If you learned something from this video, I would appreciate it if you hit the like or thumbs up button below. And if you want to see future videos of mine show up in your subscription feed, make sure to subscribe also. So we're going to refactor the code that we already wrote in the previous video. The first thing we're going to do is go to the events palette and we're going to start creating these broadcast messages. So instead of naming it message one, two, or three, I'm going to use a special naming convention that works for me. So I'm going to use one and actually just write what the text was supposed to be. Hello. Let me make another message. So the second thing I said was, how was your day? So I'm going to create a new message that's going to be number two. And I'm just going to say, how was your day? And keep in mind, you don't really have to name them like this. You can name them anything you want. You could just use a number if you want. But I'm just doing this so I could be very explicit and it's very obvious what's going on. And for the third thing, I asked about basketball. So I'm going to write three basketball. I'm just going to put basketball question mark because I know what that means. So now that I've created the broadcast messages, what I'm going to do, bring in the green flag is clicked block, and I'm going to broadcast each of those messages one at a time, making sure to pause in between each of the phrases. So let's go back to the control palette and let's bring in wait blocks. So I'm going to bring in three and let's say I want to say hello for one second and then I want to say how was your day for let's say two seconds and then basketball is going to be let's say two seconds after that we're going to say something else. So here we go. So now what I could do is I could remove the say blocks from this when green flag is clicked. Let me move this down just a little bit. And now I can detect that event. So let me go back to events and we're going to use when I receive a specific message, then we're going to do something. So when I receive hello, I want to say hello for two seconds. Now notice that this say block has two seconds here, but I'm waiting one second before I switch to the next message. So one thing I can do is I could actually start using the say blocks without the amount of time needed. So I can use the say block, say hello, and then when the next broadcast fires off, it's going to change to the next message. So I don't need to time it anymore. So say hello, then, I was gonna, then I'm going to ask how was your day in the other say block. And the last say block is going to say, do you like basketball? All right, so now I could throw this away. And now all I need to do is bring in those events and attach them to my say blocks. So when I receive the second one, how was your day, the speech bubble will show up. And I'll do it for the last one, when I receive basketball question mark. Now the other benefit of using the say block is that we can actually then attach our text to speech blocks right to it, and it's not gonna pause. So in the previous one, let me just, uh, let me show you what I mean. So this is what it would have said otherwise. The problem with this one is that the say block is blocking for two seconds the speak block. So it's going to have a speech bubble for two seconds and then you'll hear it. But on the left, it will happen very quickly. It'll say hello, you'll have the speech bubble, and you'll hear it almost instantly. So that's an added benefit of doing it this way. So let me throw out the other code. And now I could just bring in my how was your day to the second message, the second broadcast message. Let me clean up this code just a little bit. And the last question is, do you like basketball? So now I could remove this wait block. And now, basically, this script right here with the green flag is clicked event, this is the one that's controlling all of the other ones. So if I click the green flag, let me actually expand this a little bit so we could see. But when I click on the green flag, it should work correctly. Hello. How was your day? Do you like basketball? And the beauty of this is that I don't have to try to figure out any timings. I can actually choose how much time I want to wait in between each phrase. As promised, there is a more efficient way that will blow your mind. And that is to not have broadcasts at all. So what I could do is remove this script 
and just have the say and speak blocks. And what will happen is as this code is running, the speak block is going to block the next say block. So basically you lose control of the timing between each of the phrases, but if you really need to add more space or more time, you just add a wait block and you're set. With this method, I don't need any broadcast events or any when I receive blocks, and then I could just click the green flag and it should work fine. Hello, how was your day? Do you like basketball? Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, make sure to post them in the comment box below and I will see you in the next video.